Well, many of you know that we've had some complaints about this particular location, and for those of you who don't, I'm going to articulate it again. We have had some motherfucking complaints about this location. Have I now make it, made it clear because I have priestly, in a way, told you this? Now, if you don't know that verb, if you don't know that adjective can technically of what it is, it literally means that primarily we receive complaints over compliments. Complaints seem to be coming from a different type of affluent and influential community around Champaign, Illinois. And the reason I say this is because there are definitely mightiful blacks, there are mightiful whites, and there's a lot of Hispanics that do have some money and some influence. But what we also know by listening on the phone is who is who and what's what. And their level of education is usually established through the quality of their language. The same goes for all of you here. We can tell who's youthful and who is seasoned and who is immature. We can tell who is professional and who is unprofessional, who has ethics and who needs, well, more. In life, we have to be really clear about who pays our salary because if you don't pay attention to corporate roles, company ethics, and code of ethics, you could be put motherfucker out the door. In life, we have moments of time to talk about truth. The truth of every business is that we are here to do what, motherfuckers? We are here to keep and serve customers. Customers come in all shapes and sizes. So when a company location gets a good amount of complaints from the lazy ass behavior that people see inside or outside of our organization and shops, I get a little worried for me and for you. Because it doesn't take much in an economy for a corporation to hit a downturn and several stores to be closed. And then what happens to you is you lose your job by losing your job, then you have the potential of losing income that pays for the three S's in your life, meaning shelter, the house, the apartment, the townhome that you reside in, sustenance, the food, and the quality of restaurants you get to dine in, and service in terms of what you need to pay for outside of or inside of your regular life, like telephone services, television, cable, and gas for your car, and other things that are pretty straightforward and simple that most Americans have to, well, typically think about. So when I'm talking about this to you today, I'm telling you that the corporation at large, the executive team, the shareholders branch, is a little bit disappointed in your choice of behavior and your actual actions at this point that I've assessed and fully evaluated by listening carefully to what's going on in front of our customers and behind their backs that has violated federal law. The violations of federal law in our store are not a part of your employee accountabilities. They are not anywhere written in your job descriptions of what your duties are for me at this store. So at this time, we might be rolling a few heads, but this time we might also give you the opportunity to tell us your psycho-emotional reason for violating federal law on someone who lives in homelessness outside of our shop. What I know about that individual for doing an incredible amount of research online into that individual's past is that everything that you might think you know about him is truthful, and everything that you don't know about him is most likely truthful, but everything you've been doing illegally on his computer and hacking of his cell phone is completely immoral, not to mention highly federally illegal. So I'm going to thank those of you who are working with us up to this point. But this time, I'm going to have to let some of you go, but I'm also planning to sue a half of you for violating federal law on behalf of my company.